It's a big question in life. What happens when we die? There is a life after death. I've actually experienced it. The evidence I've been given is just unbelievable. Uh, you live on, you don't die. <laughs> what batch do? I'm a bit two minds at the moment, so that's why I'm going tonight too, just to see. Over a thousand people have come here to see Medium Gordon Smith deliver messages from the dead. I have a gentleman in the spirit world. Um, now, why are you saying that? I want to go back just about three, four years ago, because I know I'm going back in and around that time for this young man. I don't know how he passed, but I do know the last sensation he had, it was his head. This is what he's shown me, and it's the back of the head. Yes. Can you understand that, sir? I don't know who Stephen would be, sir, but the name is Stephen. Does that make sense? That's fine, because he's just written it up like that. Tell him Stephen, OK? Has someone got a season ticket for Ibrooks? <laughs> <laughs> Tricia Robertson and Archie Roy do hope to prove the skeptics wrong. In their long-term study of mediums, one experiment involves separating Gordon from his audience. Archie Roy and I saw a need for scientific investigation into mediums because through the years the skeptics have always been able to knock it and say, oh, of course there's no evidence. All these different experiments give us a measure of how much information really can he get from clues from the person? We set out to test the hypothesis that the skeptic would say that all medium statements are so general they could apply to anyone. Is this true? Is the statements a medium makes so general it could apply to anyone? In this test, Gordon selects someone for whom he has a message. No one knows who he has chosen and in a separate room he indicates the seat number only to Tricia. I have two ladies in the spirit world coming to me and I feel as though it's mother and grandmother. They're laughing and they're, sh what are they showing me here? They're showing me like a fountain. Oh, this is ridiculous. It's a garden fountain, but they're all laughing at this. Uh, yes, all right. The 29th of July has been mentioned as a significant date. This person has more than one home. Um, this person has maybe two houses or has had two houses at one point. I'm in a cottage. Um, I don't know if it's Christmas cottage, I want to say, but it's a cottage in Christmas. There's something that, that relates there. Christmas cottage. I think someone lives in a place called Christmas cottage. Um, I have lots of oh, statues and little uh, things. And somebody's like, oriental things, you know, somebody. Buddhists, uh, Buddha statues and uh, just Eastern looking thing, ornaments around this person. Gordon's statements are handed out and everyone ticks the points relevant to them. One person confirmed that she owns two houses, one called Christmas Cottage with a fountain and Buddha statues. She was the one Gordon had chosen. The results have been most interesting up till now, but it's too early to state what the final result will be. It's an ongoing thing. We're working with the mediums and we're very encouraged with what we're finding so far. The work goes on. <laughs> <laughs> With his growing reputation, Gordon is invited to the Spiritualist Association of Great Britain in London to teach classes in mediumship. This is going to deal with your public work. By this stage, you will all have learned, I hope, to have forged that link with the spirit world. I'm terrified that I don't get anything. What if you're standing out there in front of all of these people and what happens, happens, you know? If that were to happen on, on uh, a public demonstration, you would either have to try and re-establish that link, go back to the, the yeah. way you would build your link with the spirit world, or you would have to be very honest and say, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, nothing's coming. And I think people would actually respect a medium more for that because it then shows that you are not making this up. Without the link of the spirit, you cannot carry it any further. There are so many things that they've got to learn about themselves, how they present this, how they will affect people. There are many, many mediums in the world, but not everyone is suited to work on the public platform. Within this class, um, we're going to see if we can establish some sort of contact for each of you. And uh, John, I believe, is ready to start. He's been tuning in at the moment. So, are you feeling okay? Yes, are you feel ready to, to start? I'm going to have to stand there. Okay, please do. Yes, it's much better if you do. I know that I've got a gentleman joining me from the spirit world because he stepped into my work field a few minutes ago. Okay. Uh, as I'm linking with him and actually seeing him, I'm getting a man who would be about five foot eight, five foot nine in height. He's saying something about a chest condition. Does anybody understand what I'm talking about? Can anybody place? I can understand that. 
try and get a bit more on that, ask them yeah. some more questions about um, I want to say that I'm in intensive care unit. Yes. I was with him when he passed out of the spirit world. But yes. he's actually, he's glad that he's been able to make this contact. Thank you. And I know that the energy is changing and he's pulling back because that's all he actually wanted to come and say. Right, thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you, John. Well done. It's very difficult to learn to adapt your mind to knowing that's the spirit and not me. And it's only through practice that you do learn. You've got to try and give these people the, the strength. You've got to give them the encouragement to know what to look for, what is real, what is their mind, what is, is coming in from the spirit world. Anne Payton encountered Gordon at her local spiritualist church after her husband Andrew died in a terrible car crash. Gordon had someone who had only passed over very recently and he felt only a few weeks. He's seen a necklace with, two, uh, with rings on it and uh, that was all he said. But I had been at the funeral with my wedding rings on a necklace because my hands had been all swollen with the accident. He's mentioning the name Ian and Sandra and the boys. Well, that happened to be my son, his wife and my grandchildren. One other thing that uh, Gordon actually said, there's an anniversary on the 23rd of this month and that was Andrew's birthday. So that in itself, to me, meant a lot. Is it possible that the spiritualists are right, that when we die, some part of us does in fact survive? Not the end, not the end, just remember that death is not the end. According to most kind of materialistic scientific views, then once the brain dies, that's it, that's the end of consciousness. Um, but the point, I think, should be made that we don't actually understand consciousness at all. So it leaves open the possibility that because we don't know, that perhaps there is something that survives. I think we always have to be open to the possibility of life after death. People who have died and been resuscitated report going through a tunnel and seeing a light. Now, an explanation for this is deprivation of oxygen to the brain. However, some of the experiences involve reporting things that have gone on around them in rooms next door, um, things that have been said at times when they're not conscious, they shouldn't be hearing, they shouldn't be seeing. Now, while we get reports of this and we don't have explanations for it, we have to ask ourselves whether there is something unusual out there. On the one hand, some people would claim that near-death experiences provides uh, potential evidence. Uh, others would claim that uh, reincarnation claims provide evidence for a form of survival after death. One of the strongest pieces of evidence comes from the work of Professor Ian Stevenson of Virginia University. He has studied cases where children, once they begin to speak, remember a previous life. Where the previous person has been identified, at least 80% of the details are found to be correct. On the bodies of many of the children, there are birthmarks. Not just in the same position, but in the same shape as old wounds or operation scars were on the bodies of the previous persons. From the evidence I have seen, I have every confidence that part of us, we call it personality, uh, call it your mind energy, that we do survive. Some people at least can come back through mediums and give information to show that they have indeed survived. I don't know how or in what way we go on, but I do believe that we go on after we die. When we die, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see, or more probably wait and not see. If I find that I no longer exist, I'll be very much surprised. It doesn't occur to me really, the dying thing. And that, that's actually quite a strange, strange one. I don't even think about dying, very rarely. 